What's up guys, welcome back to The Educated Barfly. Today we're back with another modern cocktails that everyone should know. I guess this would be volume three? Volume three. These cocktails have been tested and retested by you guys, the drinkers, over many, 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 many years, and they are just oftentimes incredibly simple, easy to make cocktails at home. So let's dive into it. Let's expand your repertoire of cocktails and your knowledge of the bartenders who created them. The Bron Colada was created by a bartender named Jeremy Oratel at a bar in Brooklyn named Donna. The original Donna closed down and it was easily one of my absolute favorite New York bars. I am happy to report that they are reopening in a new space. This hasn't happened yet, but I've got it on good authority that it is happening. So hopefully we can get some broncoladas at Donna pretty soon. Typically this cocktail is done as a slushy cocktail, but today we're gonna do it with just a quick whip shake with pebble ice. So we're gonna wanna take our tin here and do one and a half ounces of pineapple juice. If you want to use fresh pineapple juice, that is better. But Trader Joe's does have a good pineapple juice in the bottle that is just 100% juice. And then we're going to do uh, cream of coconut, one ounce. Okay, we're going to need a little quarter ounce of orange juice, but we also need a half a wheel. So we're going to cut this in such a way to get that good half a wheel. You want your half a wheel to have all those little, you know, cells of orange juice visible. Just like very, you know, kind of commercial style. I actually think I might make another one that's a little thicker just in case I need it. Yeah, there you go. And we're gonna do a quarter ounce of orange juice and then one ounce of Branca Menta and one ounce of Appleton Signature. So typically this cocktail would go in a hurricane glass, but I think I'm just gonna opt for a nice Collins glass. All right, give it a nice shake. And you want to shake to make sure that most of the ice is melted, but not doesn't have to be all of it, just most of it. And then we're just going to dump it straight into our glass like so. And fill with pebble. You want, I like to make a nice snow cap on top like so. And then we're just going to do a little mint sprig. I like to have a big old bushy sprig of mint. Give it the old slappy poo, crushy pants it. And then find a spot. And this is where our orange... Slice comes in. There we go. I love this drink. So good. Look at that. I've accessorized my straw with the mint here as well. So let's give it a taste. God damn if that isn't my favorite drink or one of my favorite drinks. The coconut cream, the pineapple juice, and then the bronca menta is just so good together. The Branca Menta is one of the most vibrant flavors inside this cocktail. You're really getting that in the front end and you got a lot of mint, which is really nice when you sip it and kind of get that fresh mint with the uh, Amaro mint. Then also you have just the orange juice, bringing in a little bit of acid, a little bit more sweetness. You got the cream of coconut, which obviously makes it very coconutty, but then also adds the sugar to it. And it's not too sweet. The Amaro is really, really balancing out the cocktail from the sugar that's in it. What I really love about this cocktail is that you can taste all of the singular components on their own, but then you also taste them as a whole. And for me, that is very masterful cocktail making. So there it is, guys, the Broncolata. The Slope was created in 2009 by New York City area bartender Julie Reiner for her bar, The Clover Club. She wanted to have a house Manhattan, and so she decided to throw her hat in with all of the other Manhattan variations named after Brooklyn neighborhoods. This particular cocktail was named after Park Slope, which is the Brooklyn neighborhood she was living in at the time. I am sharing it with you because it is chef's kiss, magnifique. So in a mixing glass, we are gonna do one dash of Angostura bitters, quarter of an ounce of apricot liqueur. We're using the Rothman and Winters. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of Punta Mess. And Punta Mess is actually a vermouth amaro hybrid. So this, my friends, uh, does have to go inside the fridge. And two and a quarter ounces rye whiskey. And this is actually two and a half ounces to the top, so I easily can measure out two and a quarter here, which is really nice. Another reason to get this measuring cup jigger. Crack our first cube of ice. Maybe crack our second cube of ice. I should just account for the fact that I always crack two cubes of ice before I put the rest of the ice in. I always say crack a first cube and crack a second cube, but I really should just realize that I'm constantly cracking more than one cube. You wanna make sure you have a nice bit of ice in your mixing glass. So we are gonna stir this approximately 45 seconds, maybe a little more, maybe a little less to get the proper dilution and chill before we strain. 
And then we're just going to strain into our cocktail glass or Nick and Nora. This is six ounces, so it's a little bit big, but that's okay because you get a nice healthy wash line there. And then we are going to add a cherry. And I like to just put my cherries at the bottom. I mean, you can put it on a pick if you want and make it look, you know, I don't know, a little bit more presentable, but I like to just boop it right down into the cocktail like so. Uh, let's give this guy a taste. I'm very excited for this. I can smell it already. I love stirred rye cocktail, let me just tell you. Oh my God, so good, so flavorful. You get the apricot, giving it some light sweetness, and then you have the bitterness and herbalness of the Amaro, accompanied with the rye whiskey. I used 100 proof rye, which really knocks up the flavor profile. Anytime I use Amaro inside a cocktail, and I know it's going to be uh, bitter and big, I wanna match that bigness with uh, some really flavorful uh, whiskey. This particular rye whiskey is gonna be a little bit higher in the rye grain. So you're getting a little more of that spice and you're getting a little bit more of that malt. It's gonna blend really nicely with the Amaro. And then you have that twinge of apricot on the back end. And then also providing a little bit of sugar, a little sweetness and a little bit of that kind of stone fruit flavor. That is just so good. This cocktail is really nicely balanced. I don't know if I could drink a bunch of these cause I would get very, very drunk, but I would like to drink a bunch of these. How about that? Deserves a second sip. So there it is, the slope. The Art of Choke was created by Chicago area bartender Kyle Davidson for the Violet Hour. And you guys know where that is. It's in Chicago. All right, first thing we're gonna do is grab our glass here and put about six mint leaves into the bottom of our glass. We're gonna do three quarters of a teaspoon of lime juice. And then we're gonna do three quarters of a teaspoon of rich demerara syrup, like so. We're gonna do a quarter ounce of green chartreuse, everybody's favorite alpine liqueur. And then one ounce light rum. I like to use the Saison, which is a blend between uh, Barbados, Jamaican, and Trinidad rum. It's very nice. It has a little bit of that kind of tropicalness to it. Uh, and it goes really well in this cocktail. And then we're gonna do one ounce of Chinar here and just give the, the mint a, a light press. You don't wanna be like mashing it, make it too vegetal. You just wanna press it to release those oils. So we're just gonna crack that first cube, fill it up here with ice, and give this a stir. Set this aside real quick, let it sit. That is the beauty of stirring cocktails, is you can kind of let it sit a little bit in the glass and it will not over dilute. Like one more, just double strain this real quick into our glass, like so. I give it like a quick little turn and get a nice mint sprig to garnish it with. Voila, the art of choke. Let's try it. The flavors are so vibrant. Definitely have that chartreuse and lime right on the back of your palate. The chinar does not uh, overpower anything, but you get that really nice back palate bitterness, and then you get the kind of tropicalness of the rum. The rum is really playing a supporting role in this cocktail, really supporting the other flavors. It's very, very nice. Um, it's not too overdone with the lime and the simple syrup. And also this is one of those rare citrus drinks where you stir the citrus and so the texture is completely different. You're not getting that frothy texture. It's a lot silkier, a lot more like an old fashioned. It's a nice cocktail. It's a really nice cocktail. A cocktail that kind of breaks the rules of conventional bar wisdom. And then one that does that very, very well. So there it is, the art of choke. The French Pearl was created by bartender Audrey Saunders in 2006 for her bar, The Pegu Club. It is basically a South Side that's been Frenchified with Pernod. Because this cocktail was created in 2006 and the ban on absinthe wasn't lifted until 2007, I'm assuming that the original was created with the Pernod Pastis, and so that's what we're gonna be using. Just keep that in mind because that is a tad more sugar and it's lower in proof than its absinthe counterpart. But if you want to use absinthe for this cocktail, you absolutely can do that and it will work great. So let's grab a tin. So first things first, we're gonna do six to 10 mint leaves and just give that a light muddle, just pressing out the oils. And we are gonna do three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. And then we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of one to one simple syrup. And then we're gonna do quarter of an ounce of our Pernod Pastis. And then two ounces of your favorite London dry gin. Grab our chilled cocktail glass here. We're gonna give it a 
strain. And you have this nice pale, like ethereal green color because you have the pastis in there, which luches, it turns cloudy. And then to garnish, we're just gonna take a little mint leaf here, give it a slap and put it on top like so. All right, let's give it a sip. I mean, you get all the benefits of the South Side. You get the mint, the lime, the simple syrup. We know that that goes really nicely with gin. All the botanicals are playing together, the fresh mint, the botanicals and the gin. 100% awesome, mm, magnifique, I love it. But the added extra element in this cocktail is the pastis, which gives it that nice anise flavor. And I gotta tell you guys, I'm not a fan of anise just on its own. I can't eat black licorice. I really don't like that anise flavor. But when paired with other flavors like gin and the botanicals inside the gin, fresh mint, things like that, lime, I think that that flavor profile really sings. It gives a nice silver lining to the cocktail, if you will. So here it is, the French Pearl. One of the very first Manhattan variations named after a New York neighborhood, the Greenpoint was created by bartender Michael McElroy around 2005 for Milk and Honey. And before that, Vincenzo Errico, the creator of one of my absolute favorite drinks, the Enzoni, had created a drink called a Red Hook. That was one of the very first Manhattan variations named after a Brooklyn neighborhood. And then the Greenpoint was the next one uh, after that. So it's a kind of a twist on that uh, Vincenzo Errico cocktail. And then this sparked a trend that blossomed many, 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 many more cocktails uh, after it. This cocktail has a very special place in my heart because it's one of the very first Manhattan variations I learned to make. And I absolutely love it. All right, let's get into it. So first thing we're gonna do is one dash of Angostura bitters, one dash of orange bitters, half an ounce of sweet vermouth, half an ounce of yellow chartreuse, two ounces of rye whiskey. I always like to use 100 proof rye. I like the bigger flavor profile in these cocktails. So another note about this cocktail before we get into the stirring is that the rye that I like to use is a higher rye percentage rye uh, you can get ryes that have higher corn percentage. They're a little bit sweeter, but I think that the added kind of maltiness and spiciness of that rye and that sort of dryness that you get from the rye grain works really well in this cocktail uh, with that chartreuse and the sweet vermouth. So give this a guy a nice stir, approximately 45 seconds, but you know, you can take a look on the outside of the glass and see that it's frosting and you will also kind of be able to tell as the volume gets a little bit bigger. Um, keep in mind that when you're using ice directly out of the fridge, it's pretty dry. It doesn't have a lot of surface water on it. So it'll be very hard to over dilute this cocktail when stirring. So you could stir it for a full two minutes and it wouldn't really make that much of a difference. Um, it does take a little longer to stir a cocktail down to equilibrium. Then we're just gonna strain it into our glass like so. This cocktail gets a lemon twist. So we're gonna spritz it over our cocktail, make sure you get all those nice oils on there. We're just going to cut it nice. So this is one of those cocktails that you really taste all of its components. You get the rye whiskey, you get the maltiness and dryness of that rye. On top of that, you get the yellow chartreuse, which is bringing in an herbal sweetness. You get a, the botanicals also from the sweet vermouth, which is bringing in a little, it's like a lightly sweet, but then very botanical forward. You have the botanicals inside the chartreuse, which has 130 botanicals in it. You get the botanicals of the sweet vermouth playing really well together. And then all of that is being tempered by the Angostura bitters, which brings in not only bitterness, but a little bit of spice and a little bit of that kind of island spice flavor. And then you get the orange bitters, which are accentuating that kind of sweet, bitter orange. And then to cap it all off, a little bit of the lemon, that nice lemon zest gives it brightness, gives it a little zing and it is just so well balanced, very masterful. It is very easy to see why this cocktail was copied many, 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 many times over all over the world. It is fantastic. So there it is, the green point. There you have it guys, five modern classic cocktails. Everyone should know how to make. These guys are super simple, easy to make, and it is just a good way, like I said earlier, to up your cocktail game. So get it done. I'll see you guys on another time.